hack any website, we need to find one of those most common website security vulnerabilities that we can exploit in order to get something out of that website. Those vulnerabilities include SQL injection, cross-site scripting, broken authentication and session management. We can try to find those vulnerabilities and exploit them by hand. However, it's much faster to use a vulnerability scanner that would go through all those links and test for as many vulnerabilities as possible. And that's why today I'm going to show you the top five best scanners for finding vulnerabilities. Each one of those scanners will give us the power to find some of those vulnerabilities. I have set up a vulnerable website with all possible exploits. Let's see if we can find them all. First of all, meet our target, the damn vulnerable web application. You can see it over here, we have some brute forcing attacks, cross-site uh, request forgery, file inclusion, file upload, SQL injection, multiple types. We're going to use five different vulnerability scanners specially made for websites to see if we can actually detect all those vulnerabilities. Let's start from Nikto. Nikto is a framework that scans web-based applications and web servers for known bad files that could potentially be dangerous. Other thing it can detect includes outdated config, port scanning, username enumeration, and more. Let's try it out. Nikto is pre-installed with Kali, so all you need to do is type Nikto, give it the host, and hit that enter button. You can see first it identified the type of server. It has found that there are there is no anti-click shacking X-frame option header. Uh, XSS protection is not present, and has also noticed the cookies that were created in this session. It has also found our admin page. And all of that didn't take it more than a few seconds. That's already pretty good. Nikta has also the option to check the database for any errors. You can see it over here going over the databases that it found on this website. And it has found many syntax errors in them. Now you can also define where you want to write your output to. This is good for a forensic analysis. Uh, disable using SSL. Define the board. However, I'm already passing the board as part of the URL. So there's no need for me to define it there separately but nikto remains very limited we for example we don't have a way to pass cookies to it and it also does not include a wide range of attacks it mainly includes some indicators to what we could do like for example launch an xss attack but we don't know where or which arguments we could use or how we could do it so let's move to something a bit more advanced let's move to something that will actually scan the whole website and give us a bit more information about it and this brings me to Skipfish. So Skipfish is an active web application security reconnaissance tool. It prepares an interactive sitemap for the targeted site. The resulting map is then annotated with the output from the number of active security checks. So this is pretty good. It will actually go through every possible URL and give us a list of those, build a map for us for what we could exploit. Well, let's try it out. So Skipfish also ships by default with Kali Linux. I'm going to go skip fish minus H. You see, we can already see a bit more options than what we had on Nikto, which is pretty good. For example, we can pass a username and a password over here, uh, define the crawling scope. And also we have many reporting options. We can define the output directory. This is something that's actually required. And we can also provide it with a word list that it will try to go through and look for links using it, which is pretty awesome. All right, so let's try it out. Keep fish, well, not minus H anymore. We have to define the output directory. I'm just gonna call it skip. And then we have to pass the URL of our vulnerable website that we wanna scan. It provides us with some options to abort the scan, watch number of requests per second if this drops below 100 or 200 then it will be a very long scan however i don't think this will be the case since everything is running locally on my machine so all we have to do here is hit enter so in a matter of seconds it has managed to launch more than 6000 http requests and generated a report for us that we can view over here at index.html let's look at the report so you need to go into this skip folder that we have defined using the output and then hit this index.html. This will give you a summary of the results of this scan. For example, we can see the document types that Skipfish has encountered, like images, their URLs, the text CSS, the HTML, and then some issues that Skipfish has encountered. That the response varies sometimes, a correct or missing char set. 
password entry form that we can actually brute force. But this is also a bit basic because Skipfish could not get past the login screen of our vulnerable website. It was stuck here and this, why, this is why it has found such limited results as the ones that we see over here. It didn't manage to go into any more of the advanced links, the SQL injections and the other ones. Uh, to give Skipfish the capabilities of logging into the website, we can pass it the cookie which is used in the session management of this vulnerable website. We can view the cookie by hitting this inspect button, going to application, and then you can see over here there's a BHP session ID and a security level defined as low. We need to copy both of those cookies and pass them to Skipfish. To pass a cookie to Skipfish, we need to use the minus C flag followed by the cookie name and the cookie value. You put this equal sign between the two. And for each cookie that you need to define, you'll have to use the C flag. So I've defined the PHP session, but I also need to define the level of security. All right, so we've got now the two cookies that we will need to pass the first login screen. Let's try the scanner Skipfish again with more capabilities now that it can go past the first login screen. The cookies should be actually placed before the URL for Skipfish to function correctly. You can see that the number of HTTP requests has already gone way up and the scan is taking more time. My CPU is actually in use, which is a good indicator that we've managed to go past the login screen. All right, voila, we've got a report. Let's check it out. All right, look at the difference. We've already identified many different types. The last time we only had some very basic overview of the document types. But more importantly, we've also identified more issues, like for example, numerical file names, so we can actually enumerate over those URLs. There's an HTML form, the password entry form. There are hidden files that Skipfish has managed to find. And it has managed to trigger many errors that now that it actually has access to all the resources on this web server. All right, that's pretty good. We've already managed to gather a lot more information than what we had with Nikto, but we still do not have clear view of which exploits are possible. Like we don't know how to exploit this website. So let's try something a bit more advanced. Webity is another penetration testing tool that allows you to audit the security of a website. It performs many scans like SQL injections, cross-site scripting, and all the other attacks that are known to be exploitable on websites. It uses both Git and Boast methods as part of its attacking capabilities, and it has many features like HTTP, HTTPS. Now let's see, what can we do with it? Um, clear this, webity minus H. Now look at the amount of options that we have available with this tool. It's already marvelous. Well, first of all, there are there's a list of modules well, let's check this out. This command will list all the attacks that WebIT come equipped with. So for example, it can do a blind SQL attack, uh, brute force login forms, detect files related vulnerabilities such as tri directory traversals and include vulnerabilities, and a lot more. This seems to be pretty awesome. Let's try it out. We need to provide it with the minus U for URL. Now, if we launch it like this, it will be also stuck on the login screen. So we need to pass the cookie as a JSON file. All right, let me show you what this JSON file looks like. Cat cookie.json. It will simply include the BHP session ID and the security level. The same two uh, cookies that we've defined. WebT has a special tool to get those uh, cookies if you don't want to do this yourself. So we've passed the cookie. We're going to be logged in. However, framework is might actually reach the logout button. So we don't want that to happen. We don't want to end this session. So we're going to exclude it. We're going to do minus X and add to it an exclusion for logout.php. However, since I've already used this uh, tool before, I will need to flush the old attacks so it will actually execute them again. All right, you can see over here that has already detected all the flows that are in the configuration. It's detected the cookies, and now it's trying an execution to get more files of this web server. Here, it's actually trying to traverse the path. Now, this will take a moment until it finishes. So we'll be back when this is done. All right, so the scan is completed. Now we can see, for example, that it has found an XSS vulnerability. 
under this link, which is correct because there should be an XSS vulnerability here, it is exploitable using this long blob. Now, once the execution completes, the tool will generate a report for us. You can see that it has found an SQL injection, traversals, command execution, four HTTP secure headers, vulnerabilities, HTTP only flag cookies, so much stuff. Now, I didn't let it run the whole SQL injection module because that will take too long. That's why I didn't find those. But I'm going to show you in a moment how to do a specific attack and focus on it. Cross-site scriptings, there are five different vulnerabilities. If you click on them, it will take you and tell you where under which URL they were present. However, if you click on this HTTP request, it will not show the exploit because it was too long. But what you could do is go back to the output from the console and search for the vulnerability that you want. Let's try the reflected XS. You can see that an alert has been triggered. Even though our website does not include an alert, this is basically a reflected cross-site scripting attack. WebPC has managed to actually find it and find an exploit for us, which is super good. Now let's try a specific attack. To do that, we're going to use the same command. However, we're going to append minus M. That will let us choose which module we would like to use. And we can go for blind SQL. We can also choose how aggressive the framework would be. So I'm going to choose the highest level, which is insane. And instead of going over every URL, I'm going to focus on the SQL blind injection. Now, this has been a very awesome tool. It gave us the power to launch any attack we wanted. And it also has le different levels of aggressiveness, which makes it super awesome. There are similar tools, which brings me to the OWASP Z attack proxy. The Z attack proxy scanner is a very good penetration testing tool. Its main power is the fact that it has a graphical user interface. Let's try it out. Once it's been installed, all you have to do is type ZA proxy, and this will launch the graphical user interface. And voila, we've got ourselves a graphical user interface that will allow us to scan websites. All you have to do is hit this quick start, fill up the URL that you would like to attack. In my case, since I want to use cookies to log in, I'm going to need to make a script. I'm going to include a link in the description so you can set it up the same way. The first thing we're going to do is to launch a spider to scan all the possible URL. This will enumerate every sub URL in this website. You can see those URLs over here. Now, once this operation is complete, we can launch a full scan. Hit this quick start button and hit attack. You can see the progress down here, which URLs it is trying, and this will take a long while. Now, once the scan is completed, you will get a whole list of every vulnerability that was found. I think it has managed to find all the vulnerabilities on this website. On top of that, if you double click on one of those vulnerabilities, you will see a description of this vulnerability, solution on how to mitigate it. In the case of an SQL injection, you will also be able to see the attack. So what to actually use to trigger, to trigger this SQL injection vulnerability. And the fact that it gives you the attack gives it many extra points for me. The setup is a bit tedious. You have to go through all those steps to make sure that it can log in and all of that. But once everything is set, it's a super amazing tool. But I still have one last tool to show you. It's the XSSER. This cross-site scripter, it's an automatic framework to detect, exploit, and report XSS vulnerabilities in web-based applications. It's a super powerful tool. Let me show you. Let's look at what it can do. I think this is the longest option menu that I've seen between all those scanners, although it's a specialized tool. So you would think that the more general tools will have more, more options, but this is just unbelievable. The first thing this tool comes equipped with is the checker systems. These options are useful to know if your target is using filters against XSS attacks. There are also some special techniques uh, that uses fuzzing to improve your cross-site scripting. Now, I hope you had a lot of fun hacking this website and hopefully the website scanners will also be helpful in your penetration testing slash ethical hacking career and see you again next time.